I'm Justin Taylor with Crossway Books, sitting here today with my friend Joe Thorne, talking about his new book, Note to Self, The Discipline of Preaching to Yourself, new book published by Crossway in partnership with Resurgence and The Relit Line. Joe, thanks for taking a few minutes to talk today. It's my pleasure. Uh, tell us a little bit about the book. For people who don't know about it, what's the format of it? Um, how did you write it? What will they find when they pick up this book? Really, at, at bottom, it's an introduction to the biblical discipline of uh, meditation. Um, most Christians, and I know, are interested in meditating on Scripture, but uh, they don't really know what it means. And for many of them, it sounds very passive, like to sit and soak, mm -hmm. soak in the Scripture. Um, but biblical meditation is very active, and it should be very aggressive. It's where we are uncovering our own sin, struggles, our idols, and applying the Scripture with great specificity to our own lives. And so there's been a lot of talk about this idea of preaching to ourselves and specifically preaching the gospel to ourselves, which we love. We think this is really good. So I wrote Note to Self to help people figure out what it actually means to preach, to preach to ourselves, mm -hmm. and how that might actually look uh, in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. So the book has an introduction uh, that gives people a, a big perspective on the discipline of preaching to ourselves, um, what it's made up of, how do we preach the law, and how do we preach the gospel to ourselves, and we talk about how, why we need to do both. And then there are 48 uh, daily readings that people can work through uh, where they can see what it would look like to preach to themselves uh, in really practical terms. And all the feedback that I've gotten from the book and my own experience of, of reading some of these is just you really have a gift at, at writing in a concise way, but also in a, in a meaty, significant way. I think it's going to end up serving a lot of people who pick up the book. Um, okay, so we talked about preaching to yourselves. I mean, for, for people who are sort of used to running in our circles, that concept may be familiar. But for somebody who's never heard of that idea, I mean, that, that might sound strange. Like, do you berate yourself? Do you stand behind a pulpit and videotape yourself? I mean, what does it mean? We'll talk in a little bit about what it means to preach the law, what it means to preach the gospel, but just this concept of preaching to yourself. I mean, is it the guy walking down the street with a sandwich board muttering to himself? Or, or what is that, where does that come from? What does it mean? Where do you see that in Scripture? Well, Martin Lloyd-Jones, um, in his book Spiritual Depression, talks about this idea that w part of what gets us into trouble is that we listen to ourselves mm -hmm. rather than talk to ourselves. We say to ourselves, like, oh, I, I, I'm such a loser, or I, I, I can't win, and um, where is God? And God's not here. And, everything's going wrong and so we kind of talk ourselves out of belief in the truth and he says what we need to do is take ourselves by the hand and then lead ourselves to the truth so we're going back to scripture when we're preaching to ourselves and we see it beautifully displayed in the Psalms uh, I think we see Paul doing it in Romans 7 and 8 but you know Psalm 43 Psalm 73 and many others uh, show us how the psalmists will ask these big questions where they're confronting their own struggles their own unbelief saying I know that God is good to Israel but my foot almost slipped because I began to see uh, the prosperity of the wicked and everything around me was telling me that God isn't good to Israel but that he is in fact good to the wicked so what the psalmist does though is he takes himself by the hand and leads himself to the truths that God has revealed about himself so it's 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 not vain introspection and it's not beating ourselves up it's really leading ourselves back to the truth that God has made known in his word because I want to get to the the idea of preaching the gospel to yourself but I think one of the unique things uh, especially in our circles, is your emphasis on preaching the law to ourselves. Um, I mean, that, that'll seem counterintuitive to some people. Why would you want to preach the law to yourselves? Shouldn't you be preaching gospel hope and not just the demands? And uh, So how, how do you think through gospel and law, and, and why is it important for us who really care about the gospel to also be preaching the law to ourselves? Yeah, well, I think all of Scripture is made up of both law and gospel. Uh, and when I'm talking about the law in the book, I'm really talking about the commands of God. Uh, big picture, to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbors, uh, clearly uh, broken out into ten commandments. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the, the law of God is uh, repeated and expanded upon uh, by the apostles, uh, by the prophets, by Jesus himself. Uh, God does have a will for us that he wants us to follow. And we can't really get to the gospel un unless we are preaching the law properly, both evangelistically to others, but even to ourselves. Mm 
And so I break down this idea of the law and, and what it's supposed to do um, in the book in, into three basic uh, parts, saying that the law shows us what's right, what's wrong, and what's needed. So the law shows us what's right. It shows us God's will. And this is amazing grace, that he hasn't left us in the dark to wonder what he wants us to do or how he wants us to live. He has told us what he requires of us, and, um, and so this is, this is a good thing. But the law also shows us what's wrong, and what's wrong is me. I see that God's will is good, but I don't keep his will. I go my own way. Um, even when I try to keep the law, um, my motives are mixed, and I fail. So the law shows us what's good, it shows us what's wrong, but then it shows us what's needed. Because I am a lawbreaker, um, because I am condemned by the law and guilty before God, I need redemption, restoration, I need the forgiveness of sins. And so in that sense, the law, when the Spirit of God is at work in our lives, prepares us for the gospel, showing us our need for the redemption that only God can offer in Jesus. So once we believe in the promise of God that all who come to him by faith in Christ are forgiven, they receive the righteousness of Christ who fulfilled all righteousness for lawbreakers like us, we have hope, freedom, and confidence, and we can then actually return to the law without condemnation, with great joy and thankfulness. We can, by the Spirit's enabling power, carry out the law uh, to the glory of God. So once you've, you've done that and you, you touched on the gospel at the end of that, how do you respond to people who say this idea of preaching the gospel continually to yourself is, it's reductionistic, I mean, it's, it's simplistic. How could you, you know, come up with a whole book on preaching the gospel to yourself? Is it just anytime anything happens, just say, Jesus died for my sins and therefore I preach the gospel to myself? Or, I mean, explain, I, just assuming that it's more rich and textured and glorious than, than just, you know, repeating a sentence over and over again. So maybe, maybe you can talk a little bit about what preaching the gospel looks like to yourself and the importance of keeping the gospel as the main thing. Well, like any biblical discipline, this needs to be rooted in Scripture. Mm -hmm. And so in any passage, in any book that we're in, we're wanting the Word of God to be speaking directly uh, to us uh, in, in our very lives, in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of God's blessings, where we might need uh, caution and protection. Um, and so I would say that the Scripture will help to lead us in applying the Gospel to our lives in various ways. In one sense, uh, all of the commands of God are given to His people in a covenant relationship. He says, I've redeemed you out of Israel, here is my law. Um, Paul can't seem to talk about marriage or reconciling relationships without going back to the gospel in various ways. So in one sense I'll say that it's not as simple as saying Christ died for my sins and therefore everything's okay in my life, but that everything in my life that is wrong or right is connected to the gospel in some rich way and specific passages are going to help us to make that connection. So we can forgive one another because Christ has forgiven us, and we must love and serve one another in the marriage relationship, for example, um, because Christ is a perfect picture of uh, the husband who loves and serves and sacrifices for his bride. It's really helpful. I wonder, you know, your friends of yours will pick up this book, but a lot of people will pick up the book who don't know you personally. Um, and you know, reading through it, you can think this is a guy who's kind of got it all together. He's a pastor. I'd love to just hear any insights you might have um, in the process of writing it, what the Lord might have done in your own heart or how he worked uh, in you, through you, convicting you, encouraging you in the process of putting this book together. Well, I, I think one of the, the biggest struggles that we have as Christians, as sinners, who are saints, um, is our tendency to trust in our own performance, to, um, to make much of ourselves, and to put other things before Christ, even in terms of who I am as a person, what defines me. Um, in writing a book uh, like Note to Self, or I guess maybe any book, um, what I was confronted with, with was my own tendency toward pride and perfectionism, that I really want this book uh, to be good, um, even if it isn't widely received, I just want it to be good. Mm -hmm. um, but that desire for it to be good and, and not hated uh, really started to expose a lot of insecurity and pride in me. 
where you remember we had conversations on the phone where I said, this book's terrible, I can't turn it in. And, and you had to calm me down and talk me down. And, uh, and in the process, you know, I'm re reminded through the scripture that my identity is rooted in Jesus and that he is uh, sufficient for me today. And so that whether I write a, a good book or a bad book, um, he is the one in whom I find my joy and my sense of purpose. By God's grace, I think you have written a, a very good book. So uh, grateful for that. Final question for you, Joe. Um, how do you envision Note to Self being used? Uh, what are some various ways that you think people can use it to further their walk with the Lord? Well, when I wrote it, I wrote it with the idea of people reading the foreword, the introduction, um, and then reading a chapter a day um, to kind of meditate on one particular truth at a time. I mean, in, in the discipline of meditation or in preaching to ourselves, we're, we're not likely to preach uh, something new to ourselves every day um, or certainly every hour. Typically for most of us, I have to preach the same message to myself over and over again over a long period of time before it really starts to bear significant fruit. But I designed this to at least be read uh, one chapter uh, at a time so that people would have, uh, I guess, enough time with the book and with the ideas to get into this habit of taking an idea throughout the day. But I've heard from other people that they've enjoyed sitting down and reading it very quickly uh, to see how uh, preaching to ourselves is modeled in a, in a multiple, uh, in a variety of different ways, using different texts, and then they plan to go back and use it on a daily basis for more um, meditation, mm -hmm. devotional reading. I hope a lot of people pick it up, and thank you again for writing the book.